So hi, my name is Clarissa Wrench. I'm a pharmacist um, working at Alfred Health in Melbourne in Australia. And uh, my colleagues and I have put together this study called Pharmacist Proactive Therapeutic Drug Monitoring uh, with infliximab utility and cost savings with the use of a rapid assay uh, for assessing the drug level. The problem with previous infliximab tests though is that they took a very long time to get a result. So it would be a delay in any clinical decisions that were made to the patient's dose, um, which may have been eight weeks later. The benefit of a rapid assay means that we can have real-time results, we can make real-time dose adjustments on the day for these patients. So the aims of this study was to compare the standard ELISA to the Bullman rapid infliximab assay test and to assess the effect of the proactive dose adjustment on disease activity and also compare the cost effectiveness of this um, approach compared to the standard therapy. So this was a prospective single centre study um, including patient, adult IBD patients um, on 5 milligrams per kilogram infliximab therapy every 8 weeks, so, which is the standard therapy. Uh, and trough concentrations were assessed on the day using the Bullman rapid assay or rapid test immediately prior to each infusion. So dose adjustments were made according to the algorithm here, aiming for three to seven micrograms per mil. We would either then increase the dose from wheat one to three milligrams per kilogram or decrease it from one to two milligrams per kilogram depending on that range of the, of the test. Disease activity was also assessed um, on the day using uh, a clinical assessment from the doctors using the Harvey Bradshaw score for Crohn's disease patients and the simple clinical colitis activity index for the ulcerative colitis patients. We also um, assessed the disease activity using the faecal calprotectin at baseline at six months and then at 12 months. We found that there was a positive agreement with the uh, Bullman rapid assay and the standard ELISA. Um, with a Pearson's correlation of uh, 0.7 and the, using the bland Altman test which is a better test to use when you're measuring the agreement between um, two items or two tests and that showed that there was a positive agreement between the two. We found that on study entry 77% of the patients required a dose adjustment. So 51% of the patients required a dose decrease because they were super therapeutic and 26% of the patients required an increase in their dose. Over the infusion time, so from um, the infusion 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, the 12 month period, we found that there was an in we were able to increase the amount of patients or the percentage of patients within their therapeutic range. If you look at also uh, at the beginning of the study, the patients that were sub-therapeutic or supra-therapeutic, it took on average two dose adjustments to move within that therapeutic range. And over 12 months of the study, over 50% of the patients required less than five milligrams per kilogram of infliximab, um, as demonstrated by the dark green lines here. Only a small percentage of the patients required uh, over 10 milligrams per kilogram in this study. When we looked at the patients that we dose increased per encounter, there was a statistically significant improvement in their clinical activity scores in those patients. We found that using the rapid assay uh, was able to save, and with the dosage uh, adjustments, was able to save $214 Australian uh, per patient throughout this study. So in conclusion, the rapid test is very accurate compared to the ELISA. Um, and we can also see that a large majority of patients did require that dose adjustment. Um, so three out of four patients at the beginning of the study required dose adjustments to go into that therapeutic range. And dose reduction didn't carry any risk of relapse from, from our knowledge so far. And the rapid test strategy has the potential to reduce the patient risks and improve patient outcomes without any negative cost implications too. So it can be easily implemented into a lot of um, clinical settings and departments. And also you can use pharmacists to be able to do this, it, it doesn't have to have any other specialist lab technicians to do that. Um, you can do it within the resources that you have in your department.